Jacob. Good morning and welcome to the NASA Hyperwall presentation uh, this morning. Uh, we're going to be talking about aerosols. Aerosols are one of the most important and as yet still uncertain elements of the climate system. Um, and uh, the best estimates that we have of both their distribution and composition and the impacts that they have on clouds and climate and air quality uh, come from a, a series of uh, a set of measurements uh, that are run uh, through this project called Aeronet. Um, and you're going to be hearing from uh, Brent Holborn, who's the uh, principal investigator for Aeronet at NASA's Goddard Space Flight Center. And so, over to Brent. Hello, my name is Brent Holborn. I'm uh, the uh, project scientist for the Aeronet uh, project, and I'd like to welcome you all to Mount Aeronet here on the top of Building 33. We provide uh, calibration for all of our instruments uh, that are in the network. Aeronet is a relatively small program that is designed to measure aerosol concentrations and properties from a ground-based uh, network of sun photometers, these guys here, uh, for primarily for validation of satellite retrievals of aerosols. We know the energy at the top of the atmosphere. We're measuring it at the bottom of the atmosphere with these skies. We can actually point it at the sun. It has a filter wheel uh, here that uh, looks at nine spectral channels. And uh, we use that difference between the top and the bottom of the atmosphere to characterize uh, the properties as well as to measure uh, the concentration of those aerosols. Also, there's uh, a very large land surface community that doesn't care anything about aerosols, but they want to see what's going on with the vegetation and surface characteristics. So they need to remove the atmosphere. So the data from uh, this basically provides that information to correct the satellite imagery so you can get a better view of the surface uh, characterization. There's also the ocean community, which is interested in ocean color and the concentration of chlorophyll and uh, particulates in the water. And aerosols contributed approximately 90% of the signal, so it's very important to uh, very accurately remove the uh, aerosol signal from, uh, from that uh, satellite ocean color signal. Altogether, there are about 450 sites worldwide and they're very well distributed uh, in all kinds of ecosystems and all kinds of aerosol environments. And as satellites come and go, this project is simple enough and robust enough that it keeps producing more and more information at a higher and higher data rate, at a higher and higher uh, uh, distribution. So I suspect that in the long term, we're going to grow to several thousand instruments. And because it's a relatively inexpensive program, I think that the future bodes very well for providing more data for not just NASA, but the entire globe. OK, I'm down from out Aeronet now. I'd like to make a point before we move forward. Consider Aeronet measurements this way. Humans tend to look horizontally, and we appreciate visibility, and we have a notion of what haze is, but it's really transmissivity of the atmosphere. Aeronet looks up through the atmosphere to measure a similar transmissivity parameter. Aeronet's been growing and improving for 28 years, and in 2021, this year, approximately 500 ground stations have contributed to our database. It's effectively an aerosol climatology. The map in the upper left shows the contributing sites this year. This is a federated network with partner collaborations in all continents, 97 countries, and territories. The network functions because scientists and technicians working in partnership share their data in a public domain database for the community. It takes global village to make this work. Okay, but still, 
Why does NASA or anybody need Aeronet? Why ask Aeronet? Let's go to the satellites and models. Next slide, please. My favorite animation, GMAO. They do everything. They ingest the satellite data, in this case, MODIS, combine it with meteorology, sources, microphysics of the aerosols, and it transports and modifies the aerosols around the planet as a very realistic representation of the aerosol environment. Note, dust blowing off of West Africa and transported across the Atlantic, smoke from wildfires in the U.S. and Canada, sea salt, all modified by meteorology and physics embedded in the code and nudged by new data from the satellites. We'll see additional clips showing transport later. But the question is, how accurate are the data from the satellites and model simulations? We need error bars put on the retrievals. So, how do we do that? Well, let's go to the next slide. We need to go to where the aerosols are. We need to kind of get dirty with them. Okay, the upper left-hand corner shows an active fire in the forest clearing. It's man-made. Notice the dark smoke plume generating a cumulus cloud. Clearly a chaotic and a massive aerosol cloud interaction. It's very difficult to measure. The very hot fire in the panel below, well, I don't want to get in that, but some people do to get the ground truth. And we send planes in on challenging sampling missions to measure and ultimately understand the processes for the models. How about the picture of the container ship idling in a harbor in a hazy afternoon? Fossil fuel, aerosols. Then there's the dust storm and Haboob about to overtake suburbia. The melon vendor is sampling dust with his eyes and his nose and skin. Not exactly scientific, but he knows what it is. It works for him. Aeronet takes easy, the easy street. Our robots sit and wait for aerosols to come to them. Measurements every five minutes, no weekends off, no holidays allowed, 24-7. So let's go on a global tour of Aeronet. Next slide, please. Here we are in Europe. It isn't just NASA doing Aeronet. Our calibration partners in Lille and Valle de Lid maintain the European network, and the result has been a great gift to the aerosol community. Check out the map. The density of observations often shows connectivity between adjacent instruments. For the validation scientists, we have statistics. The breadth of the science sites from Iceland to Poland, Scandinavia to the Iberian Peninsula, Turkey to Glasgow. Yep, UK Met has one here. Rural, urban, over water, mountains, the diversity and density of the relentless routine observations make Aeronet Europe exceptional. And you have aerosol transport. Check out the GMAO simulation. You must credit the scientists, the governmental and university institutions that have recognized the importance of these measurements. Okay, let's do something a little different. Let's transport ourselves to Southeast Asia and warm up. Okay. Southeast Asia, another GMAO simulation zoomed into Southeast Asia. Note that Indonesian fires light up in September, while the satellite image shows thousands of hotspots, likely ag fires in Thailand, Laos, and Myanmar in March and April. Aerosols don't respect country boundaries, nor country regulations, and are transported to the east. Seven Seas is a long-running, bootstrapped international program established by host country scientists in seven Southeast Asian countries. The mission? Characterize aerosol meteorological interactions across Southeast Asia and establish a multinational collaborative database of regional ground-based observations. Provide space-based retrieval algorithms and modeling data sets and Aeronet is the validation anchor in all of this. Collaboration continues. The network continues to expand, adding to our regional aerosol climatology. Next slide, please. 
Ladies and gentlemen, I give you topography. It's beautiful, the Japanese Alps, spectacular, but topography messes up our simple view of the earth. It is difficult to do remote sensing of any type in steep mountainous settings. Inversions, trap aerosols, upslope and downslope winds make a mockery of our global uh, models. Surface cover and structure change and spatial scales required to make appropriate assumptions are challenged. So let's collect some data to see what they can learn. March 2020 kicked off Dragon J Alps. 11 Aeronet sites were established in a range of elevations, rural mountain valleys, peaks, an Olympic village, and agricultural fields. Along with transport of East Asian dust and urban emissions came the pandemic. And a three-month campaign has been extended to an 18-month campaign and counting, but we've benefited from that. On your right, the high-resolution imagery, 500-meter resolution every 10 minutes from the Japanese geostationary satellite shows a dust storm moving from East China over the Korean Peninsula into the Japanese Alps. It's a pretty cool animation. But now it's time to analyze the data. Aronet is in other mountain areas. Nepal is featured here. Note the haze moving up the mountain valley, an opportunity to validate aerosol retrievals over snow. The village is bigger and Aronet expands. Let's go to the next slide, the Amazon. Everybody knows what is going on in the Amazon and everybody is an expert. Forest conversion, land cover change, look at the animation, burning, monoculture, and a river of smoke pours south. The issues are climate effects, ecosystem function, and health effects on 20 million people who live in the Amazon. Aeronet has been measuring in the Amazon since 1992. First, with INPE, the Brazilian Space Agency, and later with the University of Sao Paulo and other agencies and university scientists. An aerosol climatology is emerging, and note the annual three-month pulse, year by year. Aeronet sites in Brazil, Bolivia, Paraguay, Argentina, and Uruguay capture those pulses as they exit over the South Atlantic. Aeronet further complements detailed meteorological and in situ measurements at the 300 meter ATTO tower near Manaus to chronicle the effects of a changing atmosphere on a pristine part of the Amazon basin. Next slide. Africa. Africa looms large in every facet of the Earth's climate system, and for aerosols, it is easily depicted in the GMAO animation. We know that vast quantities of mineral dust are transported over the Atlantic, Mediterranean, Caribbean, South America, and Europe. Aeronet is there to spot check the satellites and models, and we're there in the Sahara and Sahel, including islands surrounding the continent. Likewise, the largest areas of biomass burning on the planet occur every year in a north to south migration of anthropogenic biomass burning. Check out the animation on the upper right. Aeronet began observations in Zambia in 1997 and greatly expanded observations during the 1990s, during uh, NASA and Witts University led Safari 2000 airborne campaign to understand the processes and magnitude of the burning. That ushered in the EOS era of validation for the Terra satellite. Antonio Cafase, a young graduate student at Witts, volunteered to man an Aeronet site in southern Mozambique, his home country, for the campaign. Today he's a professor of physics at UEM in Maputo and is leading his students in measurements and assessments of Aeronet data. Last slide, please. There are 500 stories and stories within stories to be told, but I've nearly run out of time. I'd like to show you two historic science results from Aeronet. The upper left-hand panel is a figure showing the first published Modus Terra versus Aeronet comparisons over land and water. Validation with statistics, and it was good. This analysis is now routine. 
The upper right is a published figure showing the internet climate parameter, single scattering albedo for three aerosol types. All values above the blue line, which we've superimposed on the figure, would contribute to cooling the atmosphere, and those below the red line would likely warm the atmosphere. In conclusion, we have aerosol climatology, validation, and research owing to the hard work and dedication of the science community working together. On behalf of the research and technical staff at Goddard, Lil, Valle de Lid, Boulder, and Beijing, and the calibration sites at Mauna Loa and Izania, and the hundreds of scientists and technicians at 500 sites in 97 countries and territories, we wish COP26 every success. And remember, if you're unsure, ask Aaronet. Thank you.